M protects me from my dad by kidnapping me. M tries protecting me from my dad by kidnapping me. This is gonna be a hell of a first post on this subreddit. Might want to grab some popcorn for this one, because this show is gonna be longer than your average wait at the DMV. TL, DR at the bottom. Cast list. Me, my entitled mother, and my dad. Supporting cast members, my dad's GF, my mom's, sane, older sister, and some cops. Chapter 1, The Backstory. Getting right into it, my parents aren't exactly on the best of terms, actually, they haven't been on remotely decent terms for a while now. After their 22-year marriage, they got a divorce back in mid-2013 when I was in 6th grade. Exact dates are a bit hazy, but I'd say it was around April slash May of that year. It was quite bitter, I don't think the things my parents said to each other in the courtrooms are appropriate here, but long story short, they fucking hated each other. After the divorce proceedings started, I lived with my mom at our old house. She started spewing a bunch of BS accusations about the fact that your father is the worst human being on the planet, he's corrupting your mind, and a lot more hateful, untrue stuff. But I was only 11, which was way too young to know that it was actually BS. I just blindly accepted it as fact because that's what I had been more or less raised to do. But this was only the beginning. At this point, the monitored visits started happening. This was in about early to mid-March 2014. Also, if you're wondering why they were monitored, it was because on a scale of 1 to 10, my parents' level of trust in each other was at a negative 117,000 million. Anyways, for a few hours every Saturday, I was handed off to my dad and we'd hang out somewhere, like K1 Speed or his parents' house. Then I was given back to my mother and I'd go about my existence as an annoying as hell 11 year old, not ashamed to admit it, I was pretty weird. Then a plot twist happened, more like life twist, but you get the idea over Thanksgiving break in 7th grade, my dad got full custody of me. I went to live with him in his bachelor pad, and I thought that was that. But my mom. Was. Livid, I had to say it. Whenever we had visits, she would try to pull me to the side and tell me not to listen to my dad, to tell him I didn't want to live with him, or some other bullshit. But the monitor would step in because that wasn't allowed. Just like the rest of the stuff she did after this point. I continued middle school, my grades got heaps better, and monitored visits started again, but this time with my mom, only the visits were a little different, important later. Me and my dad drove to a drop-off point, a park close to my mom's house, I was given to the monitor, then we drove to my mom's house, did stuff, then went back to the drop-off point and I went back to my dad's place. It was also at this point in my life where I learned to not blindly accept things my parents said as fact, unless it was actually true, duh. This was because I learned that what my mom said about my dad wasn't true. I started questioning her reasoning, but I didn't tell anyone, in hindsight, I should have, I didn't really know who to trust more or who to listen to. Life was, somehow, as normal as it could have been for someone in my situation. That is, until Monday April 6, 2015. Maybe all this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't a Monday, I think to myself in my fevered imagination. Chapter 2, The Part Where It Gets Interesting On this fateful day was when everything got turned completely upside down. At first, it was just like any other Monday visit. I went to her house, only she wasn't waiting on the porch as usual, she was in front of the house, in her car. I thought okay, that's a little weird, and thought nothing of it. When we pulled into the driveway, the monitor and I in her car, my mom pulled forward and blocked the monitor's car in. When we got out of the car, she was yelling at me to get in the car, which I, stupidly, did because I didn't know any better. The monitor rushes over and says no, you can't do this, this is against the rules. My mother responds with no I'm protecting him from his shitty father or something along those lines, I don't know, I was in the car and couldn't hear. Apparently, from what I learned later on, she physically assaulted the monitor, before getting in the car and driving off. As we pulled away, 
I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was probably something like we are going to go start a better life for ourselves somewhere where we can forget all our problems and start over or some other BS. We get to Lax about half an hour after the visit was scheduled to end, and she asks me where I want to go. I say Washington DC BC I'd never been there before, but we ended up hitching a flight to Chicago, for some reason. I will never forget what I said to myself as we took off, there goes my life as I know it. And wouldn't ya know it, I was right. When we landed, we were called off the plane and detained for questioning. My mother and I were put in separate rooms, but the whole time, I could hear her repeating, I had to do what I had to do to protect my son. I got no sleep that night because those words were haunting me the whole time. The next day, I was sent on a solo flight back to Lax, that was my first time flying alone. But before I left, my mother said to me, when you get there, tell my dad that you don't want to live with him anymore. Deep down, I knew that the proper course of action was electing to ignore that stupid ass decision. But, me being the idiot 12 year old I was, I said I'd do that, yeah no, like a liar. John Mulani, is that you? On the way back home from Lax, my dad told me that the incident had made the news. In the clip that he showed me, my dad summed it up perfectly, it's worse than hell. I don't know what hell is like, but this is it for me. The next day at school, everyone was like whoa, what the heck happened? We saw you on the news last night and thought you died. And in some twisted way, they were right. For the next few years, my mom would be in and out of jail for repeated violations of a court-ordered restraining order because she kept trying to sign me out of school. I'll never forget how on edge I was when she did this for the first time, but as the years went on, she did this throughout my freshman, sophomore, and junior years, I became sort of uncomfortably numb to her repeated special guest appearances in my life. The last straw was when she showed up at my house over this past summer. Not once, not twice, but on three distinct occasions. Now it was my turn to be livid. On a court-mandated Skype call on a Tuesday night with my mom's older sister and her mom, who are, unlike my birth giver, sane, my mom kept poking her head in, trying to see me. At that point, I had had just about enough, and I exploded. I finally called her out on her bullshit. In hindsight, there were some other things I should have said, and maybe some stuff I shouldn't have said, but that night was one of the best of my life. I finally felt that I had a sense of closure and that she finally understood how she was affecting me. Except for the fact that she didn't understand. That Saturday, me and my dad spotted her on the main road next to my house. Again. We immediately reported it to the police and she was picked up soon after. She currently resides in jail. Chapter 3, Epilogue. The ending to this shit show is somewhat of a bittersweet one. Sweet because she'll be in jail for the rest of my senior year, and thus I don't have to worry about her showing up again. The bitter part is having to figure out how to prepare for when she is eventually let out and the aftermath that may or may not ensue shortly thereafter. It's, well, a shit show more than anything, but it's life. Not a good life, but life nonetheless. My dad and his girlfriend has been extremely supportive in this matter, and I can't thank them enough. As for me, I've been trying to live my best life, and after a significant bout of depression and a suicide attempt, I feel like I'm coming out on top. If you read this, which I doubt you will fuck you, mom. TL. DR, parents divorce, live with mom at first, then with dad, mom doesn't like it so she kidnaps me, we get a restraining order, she goes to jail, then she shows up at my house and goes to jail again. It's a shit show. Edit, holy shit. This blew up overnight. A silver, two golds, and a platinum. Thanks guys and gals for all the support. While I'm here, I should probably address a few things. I've seen a few comments asking how long the restraining order lasts. The answer to that is that it lasts until about 2022. I'll be in college by then, but my mom won't know where, I hope, so there's some comfort there. I also read another comment suggesting to move to a different city, state, or country. I can't exactly do that, one, because housing is expensive in my area, so finding somewhere cheaper is very difficult, and two, I can't move by myself, as I am 16. Again, 
thanks for all the support. Seriously, it means a real heck of a lot and I can't thank you enough. If anything else happens, I dot e, when my mom gets out, stay tuned for a sequel, not looking forward to that. Edit the second, gee whiz, another silver, and another gold? How? It's been like an hour and a half since the first edit and this is still exploding. While I'm here again, I might as well say something. I'm not sure what the gun laws are like here in California, but a gun seems a bit too drastic. My mom's never tried anything while armed, and to my knowledge she's never touched a gun. I should also mention that she's 5'2 and like 135, and I'm 5'7.5 and 170. If she does get close enough, I can most likely fend her off if we do end up throwing hands. Also, one more thing, I don't think I mentioned this at all, but the restraining order stipulates that she's not to come within 500 yards of me and my dad. I don't know what that is in metric units, though. 